between phones, televisions, and computers, between those three screens, the average person views five hours of media a day. Mostly entertainment. So that's movies, uh, that's uh, funny pictures, that's memes, um, that's social medias. So it, it's, it's entertainment. Uh, it's, it's not, uh, by definition, useful. Um, but we do need entertainment. So, average person, five hours. Um, that is 25 hours. No, that's that's 35 hours uh, a week. So we spend more than a day out of our week in total uh, looking at a screen. So one out of one and a half of our seven days each week are spent looking at a screen. I want to talk specifically about movies um, just because most movies have the intention of conveying a message or a life lesson. Most directors of films go into making a movie with the intention of conveying to an audience something that they want the audience to believe in or to understand or to learn about or something of that nature. So they only have two hours to get this message across. Most movies aren't longer than two hours. So one of the biggest methods of conveying a message is through emotion, through the use of emotional concepts, situations, and experiences. Sex is an efficient way to um, connect to an audience. Um, struggle is a big way. Uh, family issues. Um, love is, is a huge way to connect an audience. So they're going to use these methods, um, and they don't have a lot of time to do it. So they have to show you the climactic experiences and the troughs, the low experiences. So that's what movies are filled with. Uh, they're, they're filled with highs and lows. Um, and it's done to get you to recall your highs and lows, the things that you remember most, and connect with them, the actors, and feel a message out of it. Support what they're trying to say. Because they are using the highs and lows, you are getting a misconstrued version of this reality that you're watching. It's a fake reality. It's it's not real life, um, but it is one you're you're paying attention to, so it matters. They have to leave out the the little stuff, not not the the little stuff that matters, you know, like like holding hands or a wink at someone or small talk, because that stuff can still be entertaining. But the dry stuff, the stuff that we don't really think about doing, that we spend most of our time doing, the conversations that aren't that exciting, the activities that you do on a daily basis that you just have to do, that stuff is left out. And it constitutes 95% of our lives. And it's okay. But with movies, you only see the 5% of what humans, what we do. And that's the highs and the lows. That's what we're viewing. So 
so this condensing is necessary um, because if we watched a film that included all these events it might take a week to watch <laughs> and we'd probably lose interest I think it makes us impatient though when we spend 35 hours a week watching the most entertaining 5% of human life and then coming out of that and we see the stuff that takes up most of our time that isn't that enthralling it causes us to be bored with our lives it might cause us to be unappreciative of the things in life that just keep going that just keep existing because movies can't fulfill that filler stuff <laughs> you, you can't get that uh, from a movie and I think it's important to say that we learn from entertainment and a lot of the time we want to say that it's just entertainment it's not real life you know so so what we watch isn't a big deal and I'm not trying to push that video game violence is is uh, destroying us kids um, but I am trying to push that we learn from the things that we watch 35 hours of watching each week that's influencing what we think of the world what we believe in these are false situations that contain only the extremes and we might spend more time paying attention to this media, this information, than we do in school. This might take up more of our time than actual education does. It's interesting that we differentiate between real life, which is outside of media, and media itself. That's not real life. And yet, more than one-seventh of our lives, our real lives, our real time, is going to be filled with this media. This stuff that isn't real life. I need to point out that generally we spend a little less than half our time sleeping. And that's not much of real life, like what we consider consciousness real life. So to say that one seventh of our lives are being spent looking at media, I'd say that's, that's not exactly What, what kind of message I'm trying to convey. The fact is, one third of our conscious lives are spent looking at media. When I say one seventh, I, I'm including unconsciousness. And you're not doing much of unconsciousness. So, realize that you spend one third of your waking hours roughly looking at media in all its forms because we differentiate between real life and not real life with media I'd venture to say that media has outgrown 
its usefulness. To be entertained is important. It's fun. But I think we prefer sometimes media over real life. We prefer pretending and experiencing lives that aren't our own through media instead of living ours. Because when we see all these exciting things, this seems boring. And that's very sad. Very sad.